Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. I'm here today with guest instructor Janet Jackson, and we're going to be painting a really pretty scene in acrylic paint for the first time, and we're going to be using Grumbacher tube acrylics. Uh, Janet Jackson is a certified Wilson Bickford instructor, um, as I am as well. She is also One Stroke certified, also as I am, and um, Grumbacher certified. And um, we're just going to get started. I'm going to have uh, Janice in, um, Janet instruct me today, and uh, we'll be painting side by side so you can see how uh, both of our paintings turn out. So without further ado, here's Janet. Thanks, Lucy. What we're going to do today, as you said, is uh, something a little bit different. We're going to be using um, acrylic paint as opposed to oil paint. Those two mediums are entirely different. Uh, acrylic paint dries much faster. It's got a polymer in it, which is almost like plastic, and so it dries a lot faster. The other thing that's different about acrylic paint is that when you put it on a canvas, it does dry a little bit darker than what you initially see. But I think we are up for the challenge, yep. and we're going to do it. Can you turn your, no, I will turn mine. I will okay. turn the landscape, okay? <laughs> okay? Now this painting is what we're going to do. This painting is done by Lee Hammond, who is an American artist an American author. I bought her book and when I uh, leafed through it I found this painting and I really liked it especially because of her use of primary colors blue, red, and yellow. So this is what we're going to do. We can use this background for a number of things. You can use it for a seascape or you can uh, use it for uh, cactus in front of it, so a southwestern scene, but we're going to do the original one that Lee did. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is put the land on and to do the land, what we're going to do is mix a combination of the ivory black that you have on there mm -hmm. and the cobalt blue. So we'll be using ivory black and cobalt blue for this. Now the reason we're using those two colors is because black, when it comes out of the tube, is really dulling. If you put some color with it, it will give it a little bit more vibe. So we're going to use some blue and some black. So mix those two together, your blue and your black. So it's a nice dark color. I mean, the uh, emphasis is going to be on the black. And what you're going to do is go back and forth across the canvas to put that black color on. Now, because this is such a large canvas, I would suggest we come up about, I don't know, maybe three or four inches, OK? okay. And as we're doing this, you'll note that on the right-hand side of the canvas, I have a little hill. Uh, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to save that for later. What I want to do right now is just block this in. Now, because this is acrylic and because it dries so fast and we're under the studio lights, uh, what I've given you is a spray bottle. Mm -hmm. And if you want to, you can use that spray bottle to mist your canvas and mist your paints also, because that will keep them wet. Very good. OK? Mm -hmm. The one thing you do have to remember when you mist is if you mist on the canvas, you have to blend right away because if you don't, you will get little uh, dots, little white dots, and you don't want that. Okay. Yeah. So you said we were using, I thought you said cobalt. Are we using this darker, the darker the blue? The darkest, darkest. And is that the phalo, phalo blue? It's either phalo or uh, cobalt. I can't remember which one oh, we put okay. on there. Th yeah, I think yeah. that's the phalo. Yeah. Okay. The darkest, darkest. Yeah. Okay, so it'll look something like this. Now, as I say, this is just blocking it in, and then what we're going to do next is start putting the sky in. Right? Okay. Now, the good thing about um, acrylic, too, see how I just made this black here? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because this will dry so fast, acrylic can go right over the top of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, That was like a mistake, but I can cover that up with the next color that I put on there. Good. Okay. Now, the one thing about acrylic paint, too, is that it's water soluble. And what does that mean? It means that you can wash these brushes out with soap and water. The other thing it means is that every time you're done with a brush, you have to put it immediately in a water bucket. Because if you don't, what will happen is the, uh, the paint will harden up on that brush. And if that happens, it's very difficult to get it fixed. You can, and I'll give you a hint about that later. But uh, what you want to do is make sure you throw your uh, brush right in the bucket. All right, the next thing we're going to do is start with the sky. Now, what I use is Grumbacher Deep Red. And I'm going to use a clean brush because I don't want to go through the trouble of washing that brush out right now. And I gave you a number of brushes. Mm -hmm. OK. So let's take this Grumbacher Deep Red, all right, 
And the reason I'm using that is because I like the way it reads against the black. Now, if you get some black in there, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. because as this dries, you can go back in and you can fix it any way you want to. Okay. So and we're going to go up what about how many inches would you well, say? Well, you know what? It's a personal preference. Okay. When I first uh, painted this, I didn't go up high enough, so I redid it. So I'm going to go up a little bit higher, maybe uh, two inches. Okay, and this is a 16 by 20 canvas yeah, we're using right. today. So this is kind of big. It is big. Okay. There we go. All right, the next color we're going to use is we're going to use the orange. We're going to use CAD orange. Okay. And that, again, is a Grunbacher paint. And what we're going to do with that is leave the red that you have, the residual paint, on the brush. Mm -hmm. And just go into the orange okay. and tap it together so it actually mixes those colors together. Oh, I see. All okay. right. And what that's going to look like is almost a yellow ochre. Oh, yes. It's not the red and it's not yellow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's sort of a yellow ochre color. Okay. Keep on going back and forth across the canvas. And again, as I say, if your paint is not moving, what you can do is just give it a squirt with that mister bottle. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you don't hold it too close to the canvas so that you get big drops of water. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. I'm not drying at all. Good. Yeah, we aren't. That's great. Now, the other thing we're going to do at this point is you're going to use the X strokes that we had talked about once before. Mm -hmm. We're going to use the X strokes between these two lines of color to blend. Okay. So just like you would do in oil, you do the same thing in acrylic. Okay. And as long as that paint is moving, you're okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? Very good. Okay. Yep, I have a nice blend there. Now, I think we've also talked about before, since you were my teacher, that you need to stand back about six feet and take a look at it mm -hmm. to make sure you like it. This is a little dark for me, but since it's acrylic and it dries so fast, I can fix that. Mm -hmm. Now, take your a paper towel, all right, and what you want to do is just wipe it off because the next thing we're going to do is put yellow in there. Okay. But you don't want to contaminate too much with this darker color that we have. Mm -hmm. So get some yellow, the CAD yellow, in the brush after wiping it out. Okay. And what you can do is just put the yellow above that ochre-ish color. Ochre-ish. Ochre-ish. There we go. New right. color. <laughs> yeah. Mine is a lot higher, but that's okay, Doesn't right? matter. I was having a good time painting it back and forth. Doesn't I just matter. kept going. There Doesn't we go. matter. Because you look at mine. Uh, mine was almost half and half. Mm -hmm. This one will probably not be the same. But every time you paint a painting, it's going to be different. Yep, and that's good. Yep. And I'm doing X's in between and, and X's moving in between. it back and forth. Okay. Right. I like the idea of having more color on mine, I think, than the blue. Make sure you're blending. I'm blending. In between the line, in okay. between the stripes of color. Yep. Okay. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to wipe out a little bit of the yellow from the brush okay. and add some white because what I want to do is really jazz up that yellow to make it stick out some more. So what I'm doing is putting some yellow, uh, some white on that brush and going up like this and mostly using an X stroke now. I okay. should say we're using a Wilson Bickford texture brush today. This is his small texture brush. And uh, this and brush can my favorite. do so many things with this brush. Yeah, you can <laughs> use his brushes for both acrylic as well as oils. Yeah, very good. Okay. Now, what you want to do is stand back about six feet and take a look at it and okay. see how it looks. And I can see from over here, yours looks great. Good. Good. Then I can get away without standing back yes, right now. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That looks really good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, once again, what I'm going to do is use another brush. And specifically this time, the reason I'm going to use another brush is because now we're going to do our blues. And I guess it is phthalo blue and cerulean blue. And if you get blue encroached in the yellow, it's immediately going to turn green. So if you use this brush with the yellow on it, you put it in that blue, you're going to have a big green paintbrush. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put that in the water, and I'm going to worry about cleaning later. Okay. Okay. So let's take another brush, mm -hmm. and we're going to start with the 
phthalo, phthalo blue at the top. Okay. I'm going to come from top down now. Okay. okay. So phthalo blue, tap it out. If it's getting dry, you can actually mist your either your canvas, your palette, or both. Mm -hmm. So when you say mist, this is what we're doing. We're just taking a yep. whatever bottle we have extra and right. just misting a little bit right over the paint. Right. Keep and it that a little will damp. Make it wetter. Okay. Also, what we want to do is use X strokes back and forth across the canvas, but make sure that the corners of the canvas are the darkest. Okay. Because what that does is it leads the, eye, uh, the uh, viewer's eye into the center of the canvas. So you want to make sure that those two corners are the darkest. Now, when you're done painting, if you realize they're not, it's easy enough just to go back and, and make them the darkest. Okay, because mine look the same so far, and I notice if I'm putting more paint on, it's not really getting any darker. Yeah, that's so I could okay. always wait for it to get dry sure. and then go sure. back. And I right. might be using too much paint, I think. And you can actually, when you uh, get your cerulean blue on there, you can move the cerulean blue up into the phthalo a little okay. bit. Okay, or maybe I could maybe put a little black in the brush to go in the corners with and mix it, it could, like we did in could. the beginning? Yep. Okay. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is put some cerulean blue in it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And make your X strokes across there too. Okay. There we okay. go. Okay. Yeah. And pretty soon we're going to get close to that yellow. Yes. And that's where you have to be careful. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting awful close. We'll have green in our sky. Yes. Yeah. But you know what? With um, with cerulean paint, I uh, move acrylic paint. You actually can fix that. Okay. I mean, if you went over it by mistake and it turned green. If you let it dry for a couple minutes, you can actually go back over with another color, a white or a blue, and really fix that. All so right. it's not a tragedy. I'm trying to be careful. I'm going across here okay. and trying not to hit it yet. But it's starting to dry, too, so that'll yep. make it a little easier. And then when you're done doing that, mm -hmm. I would pick up some white on your brush mm -hmm. and just go back and forth with the white, okay? Oh, okay, you, you mean where I down. just put the, yep. uh, the, mm -hmm. the cobalt blue? Okay. To lighten it up. Very good, all right. I'm gonna try to see if I can get a straight a horizon line because you're pretty good that you don't use that tape. I usually use tape for horizon because I can see my horizon is way off. Well, but. understand, I mean, this is all sky. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's all sky. It's all sky, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah, too. Okay, right, right, it's not right. really a horizon no, line. No, it's not. Oh. This is all sky. Okay, yeah. now that makes sense. Right. That's right. This what am I thinking today? This is a beautiful sky. Now, see, I just went over that yellow, and I'm seeing a little bit of green. Me, too. But then I also know that we're putting those trees in. Yeah. We're going to put a moon in. We're going to put some birds in. So I'll probably be able to cover up my boo-boo. Yep. I have a little bit of green, too. But I think it's okay, though. It's just you have to be careful when you do yellow and, uh, and blue. It's yep. hard for me to see from the side. I'm assuming this is okay. Yep. Okay. All right, and now what I can do is actually wipe out some of that light blue out of the brush and put some of that dark blue back in. Okay. And you could go up and do your corners if you wanted. Okay, and I'm just putting some more white in there. I kind of yeah, like how that's that nice. white looks. Yeah, that's nice. I like that too. Just to get a little little wispy wisp of uh, the white in there. So I'm wispy taking wisp. some more of that phthalo blue and I'm going in the corners to make it a little darker and Xing across the top until I get to the other side. Okay. Okay. Very good. Just wiping some of that light blue off, like All you right. said, going back yep. into that phthalo blue. There's some phthalo blue okay. and yeah, I think I still need to let mine dry. I'm liking the way that looks though. Good. Yeah. All right, thanks. There we go. Yep, I'll let it dry, and I could always add a little in because I notice your trees um, are not in the corners. <laughs> so no, I could always no. put the trees in and then right. come back there. Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do is use the uh, brush that we use to put the ground in. So it, it's in your water bucket. Okay, it's the, the one, one that has the black. Okay. Right. Take it out and dry it off. All righty. And what you're going to do is use some of the black as well as the uh, blue phthalo again 
Okay. So it's nice and dark. Tap it into your brush so it opens up the bristles. And what we're going to do now is make that hill on the side and the foliage okay. down there. So it's nice and open. It's, it's bounced open. Okay. And what we're going to do is just touch like this mm -hmm. to make a hill. Be very free and very open. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what you do is when you tap this brush when it's open like this, it creates what looks like foliage. Very good. And what you're going to do is do the same stroke across the canvas, mm -hmm. the blue and the black together, tapped open. Okay. And when you use your brush, you're going to use it in an upright direction and just push like that. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And it will create that little look of foliage. I like that I see little bits of, uh, of the blue in there. It's kind of like separating almost yeah. from the black. That looks nice. Well, when you put the black on all by itself, it's really very dull. Yeah, this is yeah. kind of brightening up a little bit there. So keep on doing that all the way across. Okay. Okay, keep on moving your brush in different directions so it doesn't look like a bunch of little soldiers. Okay. And remember, as far as perspective is concerned, if these bushes are small, it will look like it's further away from you. Right. If they're larger, it will look like they're closer to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, put your brush in the bucket. Okay. So it doesn't turn into a hard mangled mess. Okay. And use your number 10 uh, flat brush from Wilson. Okay. And what we're going to do is create those trees. Now you can see the one tree on the right looks smaller than the, um, the one in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's supposed to be further away. And what we just said is that if it's further away, it looks and it's smaller. If it's smaller, and it, that means it's further away. If it's bigger, <clears throat> it means it's closer to you. So let's look, work on the first one. Okay. The other thing is the rule of thirds in painting says that you should really, in your mind's eye, separate your canvas into thirds, like a grid. Mm -hmm. One, two, one, two. So it would be nine different grids. What you should do is put your important uh, elements on one of those thirds. So what I'm going to do is put that little tree mm -hmm. on, in your mind's eye, that third. Okay. okay? All right. So take your, your uh, number 10 flat, okay. mix the black and the blue together. Wilson would be so happy that I mentioned rule of thirds. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. Wilson, uh, every year, once a year, Wilson has a, um, a certified instructor course uh, in uh, Watertown, New York, where um, prospective Wilson Bickford instructors go uh, for a week, five days, and he uh, teaches a wonderful course that uh, Jen and I both took. And uh, you learn so much, and he does that once a year. Usually it's in the summertime up there in... Uh, Waterton, New York, and he stresses about that rule of thirds. So um, yes. he just finished a class the other day. Yeah, he just got done with one. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah, that's right. Now mm -hmm. my paint is getting dry. Okay. What you can do also is you can put your brush in the water. In the bucket. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And okay. what you're going to do is just come down like this. Okay. All That'll right. be the main trunk. When you are making a tree, make sure that you push harder on your brush as you go down toward the bottom mm -hmm. because that will splay open the, the trunk itself and be wider, which is supposed to be, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Also make sure that um, it's not perfectly straight. I have a tendency to make mine like telephone poles. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. They okay. should be a little bit generic and free, okay. all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have an option here. We can either put the leaves on or we can put the we can set the second tree. I yeah. think a good idea would be to set the second tree. Okay. Decide where you want it. Now in that case I almost went all the way to the top of the canvas. Okay. So we can do that here too. Try not to make them too straight. Okay. I'm pushing, pushing, pushing yep. as I'm going down further. There we go. Now on a smaller canvas I wouldn't use this big brush. I use the um, the script liner. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's actually easier to make it crooked than to make it straight. <laughs> you think? I think so. Uh, not me. <laughs> okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, this is a little bit, you see yours is off center, which is good. Mine's mm -hmm. a little too much in the center. 
Wilson would definitely yell, yell at me about that. It should never be dead center in my nose. So. That's okay. You got yeah. the lesson across. <laughs> okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do is use a script liner, okay, okay. because we're going to put the leaves in the trees. All righty. It's a number two script liner, short script liner. Right. I, I like to use the smallest one. Okay. And when you use a script liner, what you have to do is make sure it's very, very wet, and you have to move it around in the paint. So it, when it comes off, it almost comes off like milk or like ink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you're using oil painting, of course, you'd uh, be uh, using a paint thinner. But in this case, we can just use water. Now, I like to think of this is as a um, road map of where you're going to put your leaves. So I tell my students, when you're doing this, think about where you're going to put your foliage. And then after you do that, you'll know where your foliage is supposed to go. Okay. Now, if you happen to not put enough in, and you say, oh, I really want foliage there, it doesn't matter. Because after you put the foliage in, you can always go back and put more branches on. Mm -hmm. What I do when I'm using the script liner is I turn my hand and push down a little harder and then lift up the pressure. Right. So um, if you want to take a peek at this, uh, I'll want to make it wet again. All right. So I'm coming in next to the puddle of paint, moving my script liner around, getting all that paint in there. Holding it up, it starts to drip down a little to the bottom. Okay, so I'm holding my elbow up and I'm pulling, 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 and now I'm pushing, but I'm turning in my fingers and then I'm lifting. And then this way we get this kind of a, you know, knotty look and it doesn't look so straight and swirly. Okay, so that's just a little, little script liner lesson there. All righty, Janet, back to you. Okay, <laughs> well, this is sort of tedious. But it's very important because, as I say, this is a road map to where you want to put your foliage. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that when you make a tree, it doesn't look like a lollipop. All right. The other thing I've seen is them look like a, a pyramid. Mm -hmm. You want to be very free with this. Sometimes it's very difficult uh, because we have a tendency to want to make everything perfect. Mm -hmm. But think about trees in nature, they certainly aren't totally round or ter uh, look like pyramids unless they have been pruned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to put these branches in here. When you make branches, it's a series of Y's and X's, and also you have to make sure that the branches are not too short, because when they're too short, they don't look right. So what you want to do is make sure that you have enough water, enough paint on your, on your brush, and make them long enough. Okay. Alrighty. Very good. All right. Now, what we're going to do after this to break up the monotony of making the branches mm -hmm. is what we're going to do is put the foliage on, and then okay. what we'll do is go over to the other tree, and we'll make the um, foliage on there and mm -hmm. put the branches on. Okay. We still have a few more minutes, so we can probably finish up this painting. Okay. I think we might have enough time. So you're going to put your foliage on the right tree and then go yes. back to the left tree. Yes. Okay. So back to the uh, back to the uh, One, texture brush. Right. And what you're going to do with that is you're just going to mix it again in the blue and the black. Okay. okay. Tap it open again. The, yes. Uh, yep. Kind of tap mm -hmm. it a bit. And what you're going to do is come to the canvas and just Put in your foliage. Now, if you have enough paint on the brush, you won't have to push too hard. If you push too hard, what you're going to wind up with is a big blob of paint. And it's fixable, but it, it's not easy. So make sure when you load your brush that you've got enough paint on it so that that paint comes off. Again, we've talked about this before. Turn your brush in different directions. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the most dense part of this would be in the middle of the tree. As you work toward the outside of the tree, where the branches come to an end, that would be the most sparse. But in the middle of the tree, it would be the most dense. Okay. Okay. Yep. Ah, looks good. Thank you. Looks good. Yep. Okay. If you want to, you can start on your branches for your bigger tree. Okay. Okay, again, using the script liner mm -hmm. and a combination of blue and black. Okay. And I'm dipping my brush again so I can get that, loosen up the paint there with the uh, script liner. 
I'm rolling it, rolling it, rolling it. All right, there we go. Oh, and you can see it got a little dry there. Now, I notice we're not using any um, blending medium or floating medium or anything with this, you, so we can just really, use the water. Yeah, you really can use the water. I've tried just about everything as far as mediums are concerned to make things blend easier and for the paint to move better. And really, the uh, paint, I mean, the water is the best. Yeah, I like yeah. using the water. Yeah. This is the first time I'm using um, Grumbacher paints, and uh, well, these are heavy-bodied like paints. Yeah, um, they're professional paints. This is what we use when we teach um, acrylic painting at Michaels. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing we did on the other tree. Okay. All right. Now, when you have you're doing this yourself and you've got plenty of time, you might want to make more branches. But right now, we're just going to put these on so that we know where we're going to put the foliage. All right, so since we just have a couple of minutes left, Janet, how about you show how to, um, how you got that nice sun in there while I uh, put some more of the uh, greenery on here. Okay. What I used was a, um, a dauber, okay? It's a tool that is a sponge rubber that goes into a holder. And all you do is put the paint, the, put the dauber in the color paint that you want, yellow and white in my case. I don't like it really bright, bright yellow. So I'm going to put a little bit more white in there. Make sure that the bottom is totally full. And if there's too much paint on there, what you can do is actually tap it out on your, uh, on your paper towel. And then find out where you want to put your sun. So in this case, I may put it right here. And you put it on the canvas, and you make about a quarter of a turn, and you lift off. Now, if all the paint doesn't stick on there, you can take a brush and go back in there and fix that. So it's very okay. simple. Okay. I like it. Thank you. I have a dauber, so I'm going in the yellow, <laughs> going in some white. Yep. And I'm going to put my sun in now. Oh, and what I did was I made my tree so big, I hardly have room for a sun. <laughs> I may try to put mine in a different spot, Janet. Maybe or not maybe, quite in the middle, but. Yeah. Or maybe down further, or yeah. like it's setting maybe a little bit to the left. Over it's, here someplace, yeah, yeah. maybe. Yep. All right, let's put it not in here. Not your painting. You have to put it where you want there to. There we go. Oh, that works really nicely. I like how it gives a couple of the different, you can see white and. Yes, um, yes. White and the yellow in there. I want to make mine even brighter, I think. There we go. Wow, good. So then maybe a couple little birds. Yeah, the last step in the process actually would be to put the birds on. Okay. And the birds are very easy. Once again, you use a script liner, and the birds are nothing more than a V. Yeah. So w what you want to make sure of, too, is that you have an odd number of elements. So mm -hmm. I, that's a rule, okay, mm -hmm. that you have to have an odd number so of elements. So three or five. Yeah. But they say once you get over five, the eye can't discern that it is an even number. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who they are, but that's <laughs> what they say. Okay? So when we do, last, uh, just to uh, wrap this up a bit, when we do the birds, we do what's called a lazy V. So instead of being a tight V, we open up the V. So I'm just going to throw a couple quick birds on here. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to just find a spot by my son here. Here's my lazy V, lazy V. Want to thank Janet for coming on today and uh, for teaching me this, uh, this beautiful quick acrylic painting. And, I, and thanks for tuning in today. And again, thank you, Janet, for coming. You're welcome.